How's it going, everybody? Had to deal with a small cryptography issue this afternoon. Uh, cryptography issue in regards to just a simple site-to-site -site VPN for a customer. And uh, I figured, you know what? Um, this is the second most common thing that I get asked to look at, whether it's on an ASA or on a router. So I thought I would go through and show you guys how to configure a basic site-to-site -site VPN um, and go from there. So iOS version code doesn't make a difference as long as it supports cryptography. And as long as there's a K9 attached to your operating system version, you should be okay. I would, although I would double check with your, uh, your configuration to make sure that it's actually supported before you go ahead and say you can do it. So the first thing we're going to do here is I'm going to verify that I can ping router 4. Because router 2 and router 4 are going to be hosting the, uh, the encryption. Router 1 and router 5 are the ones that we want to be able to ping by the time we're all said and done. So I'm going to go ahead and ping 34.0.0.4. I can ping that no problem. So the first thing we're going to type in is crypto isocamp policy 10. The number is arbitrary. You can put whatever you want in. But it's actually, this is actually a priority. So if you do 10 and then you do 5, the 5 will take priority over the 10. So just be mindful of that. We're going to type the encryption is going to be AES. The authentication is going to be a pre shared key. The group we're going to be using is going to be group number two, which is the most common you're going to see, at least in my experience. And then you're going to use a hash of SHA. That's the default anyway. So we type in do show run section crypto. crypto. You're going to see the only thing we have in here is the phase one configuration, at least. The, the policy itself. We're going to exit out of here and type the crypto isocamp key is going to be Cisco and the uh, the address that we type in here this is going to be specific to the remote end of the, the tunnel so 34.0.0.4 it's one of the reasons why I was very diligent in making sure that I could ping that address. Now what I have to do is I have to come in here to configure the transform set. The transform set is going to be the actual land to land part where the crypto isocam part is going to be router 2 to router 4 talking to each other. So these two have to agree on the phase 1 policy and then they have to agree on the phase 2 attributes. Once that has been uh, done, then you can go ahead and you can start sending traffic over the VPN. So crypto isocam, we're going to say map, I'm sorry, crypto map, um, trans, crypto IPsec transform set, we're going to call this LAN to LAN and we're going to give it an ESP AES and an ESP SHA HMAC as the as that. The tunnel mode is going to be the default, which is completely fine. We're going to exit out of here. Let's have a crypto map. The name of the map is going to be LAN to LAN. And we're going to say this is going to be sequence number 10. And this is going to be an IPsec ISACAMP policy. And we're going to hit the enter key. Now it says the crypto map will remain disabled until a peer and a valid access list have been configured. So what we're going to do is a question mark, and we're going to set the peer, and we're going to say set peer is going to be 34.0.0.3. I'm sorry, 4. Because we want a peer with router 4, not router 3. We're going to we're going to say match, match the address in, and we're going to say uh, the access list the name is going to be LAN to LAN, and then we're going to hit the OK. And then we're going to do a, uh, the last piece we have to do here is set the transform set is going to be LAN to LAN. Okay. Then what we have to do then is exit out of here, type in IP access list, extended, and we have to match 10.1.12.0 on this side or the local side and 10.1.45.0 slash 24 on the remote side. And then when we go to configure the other end, which is the router 4 side, we have to reverse the roles. So 1.45 will become the local, 1.12 will become the, uh, the remote. So I'm going to come in here and type LAN, or, uh, excuse me, LAN to LAN. I'm going to hit the enter key. I'm going to type in permit IP from 10.1.12.0, uh, 0.0.0.2.0 to 10.1.45.0, 0.0.0.255. .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 Okay, that's my permit statement. I'm not going to permit anything else. Now I've, I've done that. So now I'm going to type in do, do show run section crypto. Now we should have a lot of config pop up. So 
So right now we have our phase one configuration sits right here. All this information is what we need to have it set as. We have the I transform set set up so that we can encrypt the data. The tunnel is uh, the mode is tunnel, which is completely fine. We have the crypto map is configured. We have a peer set to router four. Our transform set we're calling it land to land, and then our match address is going to be land to land. And then if we do a do show access list, you'll see that I have an access list in here. Nothing else is going to get permitted. If you wanted more subnets to get permitted, you would simply just add more sequences to your access list. I'm going to go to interface uh, fast one star zero on router two. I'm going to type in crypto map, and since the crypto map's name is land to to land, and hit the enter key. You're going to see the IC camp is on. Okay, now what we have to do is we have to go back up here, and we're going to grab all this information right here, and we're going to copy and paste it into Notepad, and we're going to make a small change in Notepad. I'm going to bring Notepad up. I'm going to copy this configuration in, and this is what I recommend anybody that's following along at home. This is what you do. And then we're going to grab the access list. We're going to say the, the permit here. We're going to type in down here. We're going to type in IP access list um, extended is LAN to LAN. Then hit the enter key, do a space bar, paste that in there. What we're going to do, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this information right here. We're going to pop this out and turn that to be 23.0.0.2. We're going to come down here and take this number right here. We're going to copy that. We're going to paste it right here. So we can swap that out. Now we want to go to router 4 and we want to make sure that we can absolutely ping 23.0.0.2. Okay, we can. I'm going to go back to global config and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to swap out. I'm going to say grab this address right here. Alright, actually I can just do this part right here. Grab this and I'm going to say copy, cut that out, and I'm going to put that right here. Spacebar, paste that there. I'm going to grab this address right here. I'm going to control X to copy it out. I'm going to put that bad boy right here. So I just swap the, the addresses and I'm going to say, okay, that's good to go for there. And then everything else is going to match. I'm going to take this information right here. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to put it right in here. Okay. So everything looks good there. We're going to exit out of here and do a do show run section crypto. And so we have our configuration set up there. Everything looks good. So <coughs> that is pretty much where we want to be with all of our config. Now we have to go to interface, fast one slash zero on router four. And we have to type in crypto map is land to land. Our ISIC camp is going to get turned on. And then that is going to enable us to talk across the tunnel. Now when I go over here to router five and I jump out of here and I do a ping, what we're going to see here on router two we're going to do a debug crypto uh, isocamp and IPsec. Now I'm going to break this down here in just a moment. We're going to go to router 5 and we're going to do a ping to 10.1.12.1. We're going to give that a couple seconds. Okay, the ping works. Okay, so here's the key, uh, here's the key factor, okay? So now we're not saying anything else across the wire. I'm going to go to router 4 just so you guys can see what the syntax looks like. Our config looks good. We're going to do a show crypto ISASA. Right now we have a working VPN. The source, this, our destination is router 2's IP address. QM idle means it's quick mode and idle. If we do a show crypto ISACAMP sessions. Uh, show crypto, sorry, uh, session. You're going to see that we have a connection. We have an Ike v1, so Ike version 1, uh, port 500. And it's up and it's active and we are going from our local database our local side is going to be here on the remote side is 23 we're permitting 10.1.45 to talk to 10.1.12.24 to have two active SAs when you're doing phase one it's bi-directional bi-directional meaning that phase one is going to talk back and forth when you have your phase two so the IP sex so the actual data traffic going back and forth there's two different SAs. If we do a show crypto, crypto, uh, ISA, or sorry, IPsec SA, you're going to see two different sets of uh, configurations here. So the first one here you're going to have is you have the local identification and then you have the remote identification. So the current peer is sitting up here. 
and we have packets encapsulated, packets encrypted, packets decapsulated, packets decrypted. This means that traffic is going back and forth over the tunnel and it's working correctly. Come down here just a little further, you're going to see this inbound ESP SA. This is the SPI or Security Parameter Index. You're going to come down here and you're going to have an outbound ESP SA. And this is the S this is the outgoing traffic going out. So you're going to have a, a direct uh, a uh, one-way outbound SA and a one-way inbound SA. So this is your security association. So everything else looks pretty good. We're going to go over to router two. And now what we're going to do, and we're going to go all the way to the top, and I'm going to break this down for you guys so you have an idea as to what's going on. And don't freak out that it's a lot of, uh, there, there's a lot of information, but I don't want you to freak out. So this is why I did this. So we received a packet from 34004 um, from the destination port of 500 to the source port. Destination port of 500 from the source port of 500, and it's a new SA. We created a peer struct for 34004 on port 500. So ITSEC, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, port 500 is ISACAMP. So port 500 is UDP ISACAMP. Port, uh, port, IP protocol 50 is ESP. We come down here a little bit further, and what it says right now is that um, this is it's checking the ISACAMP transform uh, one. So this is going to be our phase one policy against priority uh, policy 10. The encryption is AES. The key length is 128, which is the default. The hash is a SHA. The group is two. The authentication is a pre-share and the, the life type in seconds and whatnot. It says the attributes are acceptable. Okay. Then we're going to come down. So what that means to you and me is phase one passed. Now if you had some issue in here, it would start squawking at you and it would tell you there's something, there's something wrong. We're going to come down here a little further. And it says NAT translation. There's no NAT T. We're not trying to translate through a NAT connection. So um, we're good there. We're going to come down here a little further. And now we're going to get into the IPsec specific. So now here we have the IPsec information. And as soon as I find it. Um, okay, so here we go. IPsec checking IPsec proposal one, phase two. Okay. So you have phase two. It says encapsulations uh, in a tunnel, I say in lifetime, whatnot. All the information that we, everything matched. So the ESP EAES, the ESP uh, H, SHA HMAC, all that stuff uh, matched. And the key length is 128. The attributes are acceptable, which means what? It formed the tunnel. It said the local proxy is 10.1.12.0/24, and we also have a remote proxy is 10.1.45/24. You take that a step further, and it says the protocol is ESP. The transform set is none. T a tunnel is set up, and then you have your your SPI. All that stuff looks good. Uh, we have our, sor our source address, or our destination address, and then our crypto map database, the proxy matches. So what that means to you and me is that there was an, ex a a an access list configured and mapped to the crypto map, and both ends agreed upon it. That's going to be pretty critical as you move forward. You come down a little bit further, the SPI spin up. So you have an SPI coming. Uh, let's see here. This is protocol 50, so this is ESP. And I can't tell which one's which. Okay, so this is this is the inbound, this is the outbound. And the reason I can tell that is because this is my local address, this is my destination address. Fail to find a peer. So basically what it was doing is it um, went through, if we do a show crypto ISA essay, guess what? We're still active. So now I can go over to router one and I can do a come down here and I can say I want to debug uh, IP ICMP. Okay, I'm gonna go back to router five. I'm gonna do that ping, but I'm gonna repeat it a hundred times. Okay, so it's pinging. If I come over to router one, and guess who's pinging? I am pinging 10.1.12 from 10.1.45.5. So there's echoes going across from router five to router one, and router one is sending echo replies back to R5. So our pings worked out just fine. If we come down here, we didn't drop any pings. We have full data pack. Now, here's the key factor. When you're dealing with this, you may or may not have associated it correctly. So I'm not going to get into it if there was NATs or anything like that. This is a very, very basic configuration. It's almost like too simple. So what I'm going to do here is this, this configuration that I have right here, I'm going to include this in the, um, in the description of the, uh, the video. 
And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type in the, um, in this guy right here, this will be, I would recommend you pull out whatever addressing I have in here, or you can map up what I've got here. I'm going to say this is going to be the remote IP, um, remote peer, public IP. Okay. And then I'm going to come down here and this is going to be the same. And then you would swap it out. So that's going to be the remote public IP. And that's going to be a key factor. And then you need to make sure that um, you take this guy right here, so the 10.1.12.0 slash 24. And then on the side, if that's applicable, you make that the source subnet. And then the other uh, 10.1.45, you make to put that on the destination. Because remember, an X, a Access list is processed from the source and destination. So when you do a permit IP so a source subnet to a destination subnet, and you don't match any, any type of ports or a particular protocol inside of IP, it matches on everything. So therefore, you just need to be specific as to who the source and destination is, and then flop them when you're going through the actual config. So I'm going to include this in the, the upload. So you'll have this syntax available to you. And uh, I'm just going to say, um, mirror um, this on remote side. So just make sure to flip them in here and you'll be good to go. So I hope that this was informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.